Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of An Ecologist Plays. Now, as you can see, we are back in Sim Safari, and today we are going to be doing one of the four missions that we have available in this game. And I think the one we're going to do today would be Holy Hopping Hares Ranger. So for this one, the Savannah Hares are out of control, and we need to bring their population down without getting rid of them completely. We need to bring it down to 150 to 200 individuals. And the best way to do that would be to bring in predators that will control their numbers, but not control it too much. So let's quickly have a look here. So I've just paused the simulation. We have very little money. We only have $10,000. And if we have a look around here, there are hairs, hairs everywhere. Going and having a quick look at the census, the Savannah hairs, we've got 714 of them. And that is way too much for this ecosystem. The ecosystem won't be able to survive for long with that high level of grazing. So we don't have a camp at all. So let's quickly set up a very basic one. Just the bare necessities of life. And we'll bring in, we'll put in two tents. We're not going to try and make it look pretty at the moment. We just want it functional. We're just going to give them some toilets. And a cottage, I think, as well. So this is a very small, compact little camp that we are setting up here. And that is pretty much the most essential setup that we need. So going back into our park, we do need to bring in some predators. First thing we have to do is we have to put up the graph here of the number of hairs. And we need this to go down to between 150 and 200. So let us have a look at what we have available. Now, again, I did this previously, but having a look at what the savanna hare or what feeds on the savanna, savanna hare, basically all carnivores, vultures, eagles, and snakes. So we have to bring in some of those individuals. Vultures are $50, martial eagles, $50, black mambas, $50. I think everything else is either that price or more. Yes, so I think cost-wise, the best would actually be to bring in a few martial eagles. So we're going to start with the martial eagles. And we're going to bring in or increase the density of the martial eagles. And now we have $820 and that is it. So let us unpause the simulation and see what happens. So now, of course, the problem with overpopulation like this is it is very difficult to go and reverse that. Now, sure, we can go and catch the little hares, but that's not going to do much overall. So we need to really keep them under control using predators. And now, of course, hares, they can breed extremely rapidly. But usually nature prefers some kind of stability. And if you've got an increase in the prey, you can also expect an increase in predators. And we do have a number of predators walking around. You can hear the snake in the background there. We also had hyenas over here. So as the population of hares increases, so too the population of the predators would. Now, of course, going back to one of my previous videos, if you've got hectic overgrazing like this, you would expect the trees in the park to actually do quite well and to start dominating. So there is a very good chance that that would happen. Now, if we're looking at our funds, that is slowly but surely going up. So I think while we are over here on this, in this section, let's introduce a few black mambas. Dendroaspis polylepis. Let's introduce some of those. We've got a lion over there as well. And hopefully between the mambas and the martial eagles that we've got flying around over here, that's going to in decrease the population of hares. And already we can kind of see that happening. So yeah, thankfully it is going down a bit, not too hectically. We don't want the population to crash completely. And there is, of course, the risk that that could happen. Now, of course, the money keeps on rolling in a bit. So let's introduce a few black mambas here as well. 
Now I haven't seen a lot of black mambas in my life. I have seen I think three overall wild ones at least. Uh, the one time I will never forget we were driving in Kruger National Park. I was quite early in the morning and we were driving with our windows open and my dad had his arm resting on the on the door of our vehicle. And the next moment I just saw a snake slithering out of the grass next to the road and actually rose up about 1.2, 1.3 meters above the ground. So it was quite a big snake and it was one of these black mambas actually rising up quite a bit almost next to us and we were basically looking at it in the eye or at, at eye level as we drove past it and as quickly as it appeared it disappeared again and slithered back into the uh, bushes next to the road but I'll never forget that sight of the mamba rearing up next to our vehicle uh, my dad plucking his arm back into the vehicle and uh, me closing the window next to me uh, while this snake just reared up next to us uh, next to us that was quite exhilarating to to put it lightly uh, having a look here our population has actually increased a bit more so we need to do a bit more we've got lots more money so let us bring in a few vultures oh already diving in feeding on all the lovely little hairs that we've got available now previously I said I'm not sure whether the vultures would actually eat the hares but turns out that yes there are actually records of the white-backed vulture which we've got over here actually feeding on things like hares as well. Very often feeding on roadkills but also sometimes catching the hares that are available. So for vultures although they are carrion feeders and feed on dead animals mostly they can also catch smaller animals like hares if they are presented with the opportunity. Now recently my wife and I actually went to here in the Western Cape we had a look at the only breeding population of Cape vultures which I'll put a photo up on the top there and it was quite amazing seeing these birds in the Western Cape flying around from their breeding and to their breeding colony. I think on that one day we saw about 40 of these vultures flying around. It was really amazing and for those of you who don't know they've got a wingspan of 2.5 meters which is slightly over eight feet wingspan which is an incredible sight to see uh, massive wings very broad wings that help them to catch the thermals catch the hot air that rises up from the earth and they can use that to travel vast distances basically without flapping their wings so it is quite extraordinary to actually see that we're going to bring in the Secretary birds here as well, Sagittarius serpentarius and uh, secretary bird referring to the quills that you can see on the, well behind the, there basically the quills on the head kind of like a whole bunch of pens stuck behind one's ear. So a very forgetful secretary but a secretary bird nonetheless. So overall our population of predators should be increasing and we can see the population of rabbits decreasing or hares decreasing of course as I've mentioned before hares and rabbits differing in hares being uh, precocial or having precocial young where the young can hop around as soon as they are born whereas your rabbits are, have altricial young where the young are defenseless when they are born and they can't actually fend for themselves they're basically blind and pretty useless very similar to well human babies basically so we're going to bring in a few big guns here as well a coalition of cheetahs will bring them into that area where we've got a whole bunch of hares so male cheetahs of the same litter very often sticking together to form coalitions of two or three but females usually being solitary except of course if they have young and cheetahs really amazing creatures I have thankfully seen a few of them in my life and I've had the opportunity of working with them quite closely with them as well in captivity but overall really such an amazing cat and when they purr oh it is really just the earth almost shakes as they are purring we'll bring in a troop of baboons over here as well let's see which baboons do they say this is the savannah baboon and uh, let's see what is the scientific name of the savannah baboon that they've got here uh, Papio Sinocephalus, so cephalus referring to head, not, refer, not sure what the sino refers to, but something to do with a head, the scientific name. So this is different from the chakma baboons that we've got here where, where I am in South Africa. 
And I think the Savannah baboon, speaking under correction, Savannah baboon may be very similar or the same species to the olive baboon, which we also have in Mozambique and extending up into the Serengeti. Oh, increasing the number of predators again that we have. Let's bring in a pride of lions that should also decrease the population further. Um, unfortunately, our time, time is moving on, so we really have to increase the number of predators that we have. We only have 10 years to accomplish this goal. We've got eight more years to go and we still have... Oh, we've just had a massive breeding population. There we go, plateauing again. But it is <laughs> almost a thousand savannah hares at the moment. So hares, yes, their population can explode. There we go, almost a thousand uh, if you don't keep an eye on them. Of course, the easiest way to get rid of this whole bunch here would just be to plop down a whole bunch of water and say that they accidentally drowned in a massive flood. However, we're not going to do that. We're just going to increase the number of predators that we've got. Speaking of which, let's have a quick look at our savannah hare population. Oh, it's gone down by 200. We're on 737. So the graph should now show a drop. And there we had it, almost a thousand dropping down to, it says here, in the past four months or in four month period, it has dropped down. Then they started increasing again, probably a breeding uh, cycle. So the, a certain breeding season, so every six months it seems, they have an, a new litter being born and the population increasing. So if we can just maintain their numbers at 150 to 200, or is it, yeah, 150 to 200, we should be able to win this little scenario, which shouldn't be too difficult, but I think let's increase the number of martial eagles and let's bring in a whole bunch of vultures as well and now we have only a thousand dollars left so now we'll just wait and see what the predators can do to our population of savannah hares so of course looking at the the pyramid of mass as it's called you need a lot of herbivores in order to support a few carnivores and that means that if you can support a whole bunch of carnivores like lions or leopards or hyenas or wild dogs you generally can then assume that the environment that you are in actually is in quite good condition because you can support a lot of herbivores. Now with raptors, that in some cases may actually be not true or may actually be false because there's a case in South Africa, for example, where the more degraded the felt or the vegetation becomes, the more rodents you have because you are left with only a few poisonous plant species which only rodents like certain rats can eat. And those rats then increase in population number, indigenous rats to South Africa, they increase in number, and that increase in number will then support a larger amount of raptors, especially the pale chanting goshawk. If I've got a photo, I will put it up on the screen. But that means that if you have a very degraded area, you can actually have a whole bunch of raptors. And that is actually what we have here. We've got such a massive number of lagomorphs, or hares in this case, that we actually have a lot of uh, raptors also present. Now, our population of hares has started decreasing to 400, almost 450. So it's continuously going down. And you can see here, every six months, more or less, we have an increase in number. Looking over a larger period, we saw the population increase. That's when we had very few carnivores present. And then they started going through these seasonal cycles every few months, increasing and then decreasing again. Now, soon we will be within the range between the 150 and 200. And then we have to keep it there for two months, it says there. So that is, that's going to probably be the more challenging bit because it means we will, going, we will have to go and catch some of the raptors and the other predators and then hopefully not have the hares actually going extinct or disappearing completely. Now let's see whether we can actually bring in savannah hares. It does not appear to be the case. So if we lose all our savannah hares, there's no way for us to actually bring them back. And that is going to be a bit of a problem. So let's quickly get rid of our population over here, a population of carnivores. 
Looking at where we have our stronghold of Savannah Hairs, that's pretty much over here in the central to the southeastern part of the park. Quite a lot of them still here. So 363 continuously going down. Now my hope is that it will reach this 150 to 200 mark and just kind of stabilize like that for two months and not decrease too far or de not decrease too much. So fingers crossed. Let's see whether that happens. So let's see. Here you can see we have trampling damage by the elephants in the village as well. So the villagers are battling a bit, but they have put up a fence to hopefully deter some of the elephants. In Botswana, next to South Africa, they've actually experimented with what they call chili bombs to prevent elephants from actually eating their maize or their, their, their corn, their, their mealies. And the chili bomb is basically you take elephant dung and you grow chilies and then you dry the chilies and you grind it up and then you mix it with elephant or freshish elephant dung and then you bake little bricks and you make little bricks with that. And if you know that the elephants are moving into your area, you then set them alight. Set those, well, chili bombs alight, let it burn. And the capsaicin, the compound in the chilies, then volatilize, so that becomes airborne. And elephants have extremely sensitive noses. And that then basically burns their noses and they stay away from the area. Now that, have, that seems to have worked, but it has had unexpected consequences in that people are not growing maize as much or many people many farmers have switched over from maize to growing chilies because they're making more money growing chilies to keep away the elephants from their maize than they did by growing maize so it's very weird it seems to work but then it does have weird impacts in the, the economics of an area and the agriculture of an area so let's briefly look here again, the population decreasing quite nicely. We are almost, 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 almost at the 200 or 150 to 200 mark. So let's see, here we go. It's going down, it's probably going to decrease a bit, increase very soon in the next month or two, and then decrease again. This means that we want the population to stabilize, so let's start removing some of the predators. Let's reduce the number of predators especially the airborne ones and let's see if we can get the population of savannah hares to stabilize at least in this area so lots of martial eagles flying over lots of secretary birds walking around leopards lions hyenas the whole katuti over here whole bunch of wild dogs they did very well in this population so we're just catching them and let's say we are reintroducing them elsewhere elsewhere where they have disappeared we are catching them here releasing them in another area having a look at our savannah hares 237 so they are decreasing still and they have dipped just below the 200 mark and went up again and now they are decreasing again oh we are so 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 close let's catch a few more predators of course, there is also the chance that we are going to decrease the number of predators too far or too much and then the population of hares will explode again. Now we're halfway through our time that we have available to do this mission. So we've got 10 years to do it. We are already in at the end of year 5, so 5 years basically done. We've got some hares in this area. This is probably going to be the stronghold for the hares. Let's remove some cheetahs. Cheetahs also actually being quite rare. So we will be, next time I think, next time we play some safari, we are actually going to try and increase the population of cheetahs as one of the missions. Cheetahs and rhinos, I think it also was. Ah, look at that. We have managed to do it. We are the hair master. <laughs> Not to be confused with the headmaster. So we managed to bring the population down and stabilize it within five years. Actually, that's quite awesome. So that actually... <laughs> <laughs> that finished so quickly. I had barely started. It, it seems like I barely started. But here we are. We are apparently miracle workers. And that's just by looking at the food web and increasing the number of predators to bring the population down. But for now, it seems that we are done with this mission, which means next week I will see you guys again in the Amazon as we try to carry on with the story in green hell and then in four weeks time we will be back with another episode of sim safari where we are going to try and bring back the endangered species as a park so that will be cheetahs and rhinos 
and I can't recall what else, but I know cheetahs and rhinos are on the list. So until next time, this is Will the Ecologist signing out. Stay safe and I will see you soon.